Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel, my name is Anton and today I'm going to show you how to solve a problem that I've seen being solved incorrectly a couple of times. It is a relatively simple problem but still people manage to get it wrong. So I'm making this video. The problem has to do with preloading data. It looks really simple. You have some kind of process, let's say it's an endpoint, some kind of background process. It starts off and somewhere in the middle it may take like 4, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, a minute to fetch some data from somewhere, load it up and then you're capable of using it. You can imagine what it looks like. You make a request, you see the spinny wheel for 10 seconds, it goes away, it stays like that for 10 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe the day and tomorrow new data has to be loaded. So periodically you're gonna see the spinny wheel again, the application is going to be restarted, the cache is going to be busted, you will see the spinning wheel again. How do you get rid of the spinning wheel? Don't forget, if you're enjoying the video, leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the description. My C Sharp course is in there. Make sure you get it at the right price before it goes up. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. The application is relatively small. We have the program CS where we have the root endpoint, which just takes us to the long boy. The long boy over here, we just start a, st a stopwatch, we get him, and the I am here is not I am as in me, it is I am as in M, him without the H and not M as in them, right? So we're not getting M, we're not getting I am, we're getting M as in the long boy, right? So once we got the boy, we're returning the result and the service is being registered here and the services are located in this folder. We have the interface, we have the service, we have the long work that we have to perform and then we have the result of the long work, which then gets uh, combined with whatever else and we return the final result. The application is running, let's see what this looks like. We go to the long endpoint and it's gonna take a while to essentially complete. You can see that this has taken 10 seconds, pretty long. If we refresh it again, we are essentially at a point where we always have to perform the work. So what happens naturally, you go ahead and you introduce a cache. Private int, let's say cache, from the beginning it's zero, maybe even something like minus one, but let's say if the cache equals to zero, we actually want to perform this work whatever the result we get of this work and then we set this to the cache. Okay, semicolon on the end here, output the cache, format everything. Now, if we're going to come back, the first load is going to be the long one and then all the subsequent loads are going to be a lot faster. Now comes the hardest problem in computer science. How do you bust the cache? When do you update it? We want a new entry over here. Well, you go ahead and you introduce a time to live. So you introduce a date time offset. This is going to be last cache. This can be nullable. And after assigning the cache, that is also when we want to assign the last cache. So we assign that to now. If the cache is zero or the last cache time that is going to be subtracted from now is going to be more than time span, let's say that from seconds our timeout is 10 seconds, we want to go ahead and rerun this. Cool. So application is reloading. Again, the first load is going to be slow. There we have it. And then the subsequent loads are going to be a little bit faster if we wait a little bit more. At some point, we will encounter that cache busting and the work has to be performed again. And there we have it. So we made the process intermittently faster. So at some points, it is very fast. At some points, we still have the spinning wheel. How do we get rid of the spinning wheel at the startup? And how do we get rid of the spinning wheel in the middle? First of all, let's talk about the spinning wheel at the middle because it's a little bit easier than the spinning wheel at the beginning. So the way to get rid of the spinning wheel in the middle is a background job. You don't do it by starting tasks because you don't have access to a cancellation token. If you're spinning up a background task somewhere over here and you want to pass a cancellation token from your application, you will have to get it from over here. And as you can see, the lifetime is over here and it's a little bit hard to get it over there. And you think you might want to use the service provider but the service provider is going to be problematic because this point right here cannot be asynchronous. So it actually is going to hinder us trying to get rid of that spinning wheel at the beginning, okay? So the real way to update the cached value in the background is to introduce another 
interface. Let's say long boy refresh. This is going to implement this long boy refresh and it's going to be void set value. We're going to accept whatever value we need. In our case, it is going to be an integer. We are going to implement this. This will take cache, set the value, and that is it. So the name refresh here, you may want to call it setter, though you're not just setting the value. If you have other places to set the value, the refresh here is meant to be signifying that you're meant to be refreshing this somewhere in the background, okay? You come back to the program CS, you take your longest of the boys, you go ahead and initialize it. You might need to use a service provider, but here I'm a little bit privileged so I can actually set it behind both of these interfaces like so, all right? Perhaps you don't need an interface. Maybe you can register the service on its own and then you will need to introduce a background service where the refresh is going to be happening. So background, let's say refresh service. This is going to inherit from background service. Let's go ahead and implement this stuff. We're gonna go into long boy, which I just closed. We're gonna take the work that it's meant to execute, place it right over here, put a while loop, stopping token, is cancellation requested not? So while it has not been requested, let's place the await over here. We're gonna get ourselves a constructor. Because this is a singleton, it is actually okay to just receive an I long boy refresh. So long boy refresh, let's get him in here. And at this point, you may be thinking, why is the long boy long? What is so long about this long boy? And I'll tell you right now, don't worry about it. Don't let it stress you too much, right? Just let the long boy be. And now for whatever IO or CPU tasks uh, uh, that you have bound, you can actually utilize a stopping, a stopping token without having to grab it from this app over here or from a specific service and inject it through the service provider. And this is actually ends up being quite nice. So the background task is now where it belongs. Also, maybe want to add a little bit of a delay, let's say like five seconds, because you don't want to constantly be performing it. You want to be performing this task every so often, okay? With the background refresh service, you can add now stick it somewhere over here, add hosted service, bada bang, bada boom. One thing that's left is to come back to the long boy and get rid of this last cached interval get rid of this or statement and get rid of this, okay? So we still have this initial initialization process over here that we're making sure that we actually get at least some kind of value. So if the application restarts and we refresh, so the initial load is still 10 seconds. If we then refresh, it is going to be instantaneous. And if we wait a little bit longer and we try to catch this moment where the number gets rolled over and we've just seen it there. The first time it rolls over, it actually rolls over in the background and there is no wait time. So whatever it is, the latest version that you need, the work there is being performed in the background and is getting updated into your cache, be it outside or inside your component, right? And there we see it again, the value gets updated in the background. So we got rid of the spinning wheel in the middle. Let's get rid of the spinning wheel in the beginning. So the main way that you get rid of the work in the beginning is you want the work to happen before your service starts, okay? So maybe if it's an external cache and you have the background process running externally to this service, so whenever you refresh it, whenever you're updated, that doesn't affect the cache in any way. And uh, this doesn't even care about doing anything with the cache, it's just reading from it because there's another component that is constantly making sure that the cache is up to date. At that point, the problem is just solved. Now, uh, let's leave that distributed land for just a second and let's say we just have a single service, all right? How can we prevent it in this scenario? Still, you want it to happen before the service actually starts. The way that you do this is you can't put this into the constructor. You can take the work, put it into its own method. So let's say it's private, maybe static, maybe it relies on some kind of other services. If it does, register it with the service container and you'd have to do what I'm going to show you in just a second. Anyway, this will be a task of the work. So whatever work we want to perform and this is how it's going to look like, okay? With bulk of the work outside of Gitim, this can actually become synchronous. One thing that I wanna show you here is you can have your work look something like this. So you kick off the work in the constructor, so the work, 
get the field in here. And what's going to happen is from the beginning, the work is going to start and the cache is not going to be set. So what you actually want to be doing is if the cache is zero, await for the work to happen, right? Assign that to the cache. Here I notice we can't actually assign it because you actually want it to be something like this. You don't want uh, to change a state of objects from inside the function. You kind of want to do it over here, right? So let's take this random, actually return it. Make sure that we store the appropriate task over here, get rid of the space. And now you get something like this. If we take a look at program CS, this is where we're initializing this constructor. When we're passing this point, the rest of the stuff keeps getting initialized the way that it does. So the initialization happens in parallel. Let's see what kind of effect this is going to take us. So the or take us give us. So the application has started, I'm going to try to hit the endpoint. And now instead of 10 seconds, I get seven seconds. So depends how long your initialization is how long usually people hit that endpoint. Maybe the wait is going to be long. Maybe this is just going to alleviate most of your problems. All right. And that's going to be pretty much the end of story. If you really need this number to be zero at start time, what you want to do is you go to the longest of boys, the work, you actually will take it out of the constructor and you are going to depend on the value being passed over here. So this value will go on to the cache. So cache will get assigned right here. We get rid of the work. We no longer care about this. This is no longer asynchronous. We get rid of the task over here. The work that we have over here, we are going to cut it and take it into public class along boy initializer. Place this over here, make this public, take the initializer, put it over here. This is going to be a service. And now once the application has been built, you want to go into services, you want to get your required service along boy initializer, place them right over here in it, maybe give them a little bit of a better name. But once you have done your work, and you just await on it here, okay, this is going to be the result of your work. And actually, sorry, you don't want this to be in the constructor over here, get rid of this constructor, we are going to go through the set value and wasn't meant to go here was meant to go to the program CS. Maybe you just want to do it through the LB over here. If you're in a scenario where everything is in your dependency injection container. Again, you go through the interface the proper way get your long boy refresh or setter. So setter, slap it over here, set value result. This no longer needs to be asynchronous I remove async from here. And there we have it. So with the application restarting now, the effect that you're going to see is that the initial start is going to be long and you may think that that's a problem, but really it isn't a problem. I already made a video about how to have zero downtime with your application and that essentially is through the health check endpoint. If you have some kind of health check endpoint, you're deploying your application, you're waiting for it to be healthy. Once it's healthy, once it's started up, then you're directing traffic to it. So having something like this before you call app.run is okay. So if we come back over here, from the beginning, everything stays at zero. If we're sitting around here waiting for the value to update, again, all we're doing is reading from the cache, everything that has to do with the cache, be it local or distributed will happen from the background service, that background service is going to perform the work, and then write the result of the work to the cache. And that is ladies and gentlemen, how you get rid of the spinning wheel. Again, not a tough problem. We're making sure we're putting the correct logic in the correct places. And if you've been paying attention, you essentially get this business logic that is detached from this asynchronous machine, which is just giving you the latest preview of all of the information that you have. So this latest preview, you can call it eventual consistency is kind of there. And all you're doing is you're reading from it and presenting it. Don't forget, if you're enjoying the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the description, join the discord server, join my live stream on Twitch, I'm going to be streaming on there a little bit more. If you would like the source code for this video as well as my other videos, or you just enjoy my work, come support me on Patreon. I will be very grateful, a very big and special thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters, you help me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching, and have a good day.